All right, continuing in our logic unit, in this video we're talking about logic circuits. And I'm going to say this again, I know I've said it in all videos, but it's so important that you understand this video and that you take great notes because in the next class we will be building circuits. So you need to know how to do that using this video. So here's the basics of electrical circuits. In order for electricity to flow, a circuit must have these conditions. So first there has to be a power source. In our situation, we're going to be using batteries. And then there must be an unbroken, unending path for electricity to flow. And what we'll be doing to either hinder that flow or let it flow is we'll be using switches. And we're going to be able to um, tell if that electricity is flowing using little light bulbs. So each of our circuits will contain the following elements. So we talked about a battery. And you see that in the picture. So this is what it'll look like in real life, but this is how we draw it in a logic circuit. All right, we're also going to have wires. So those are just indicated by these lines. Okay. We're going to be having, like I said, light bulbs. And that will indicate to us whether um, electricity is flowing or not. And then something that this one does not have that we will have is we will have switches. So um, we're going to have metal switches, and when they're open, it will hinder the flow of electricity. And then when they close, they will allow the electricity to flow, just like a light switch on a wall. So let's just draw an example. So if I were to draw an example of a simple electrical circuit. I have my battery, I'm going to have one switch and that is going to look like a broken part of the wire but you see how I have this lever that means it's a switch. And then I'll have a light bulb and you can either put the X through it or not and then make sure that wire goes back to the battery so it'll keep circulating. So that's just a simple electrical circuit containing all of those elements. So what we're going to do with this logically is we're going to modify statements P and Q as switches. So the switches will be like our variables P and Q that we've been working with. And then when they are closed, we'll consider that true because that means when they're closed, the electricity will be flowing through. And when they're open, we will consider that false. And again, our indicator will only turn on when electricity flows through it. So when that entire circuit is working, that means that the entire statement that we're setting up is true. Okay, so let's talk about the, the different things we're going to do with the switches. So we're going to talk about the AND circuit. So that would be symbolically P and Q. So in, electri in electrical work, um, we would consider this as switches in a series. So what that looks like is I'm going to have my battery and my wire, but I'm going to have two switches. I'm going to have a switch that's P, and then I'm going to have another switch in series Q. So in series means it's one right after another. They're linked up one right after another. And then we'll have the light bulb and then the wire going back to the battery. So this is what that looks like in series. So notice that in order for the electricity to flow, both switches would have to be closed. So I would have to, both of them would have to be closed in order for that light bulb to light up. So when that lights up, that means that that statement is true. And remember when we were doing our truth tables, the only time we could put true in our truth table is when they were both true. If, if it was one or the other was false, then that wouldn't light up. And then for the OR circuit, we're going to use switches in parallel. Remember, OR symbolically looks like P or Q. And the way I draw that is I have my battery. And then now my wires are going to split into two separate wires. In this top wire, I'm going to have the switch P. And then in this bottom wire, I'm going to have the switch Q. And then they're going to meet up again. And then we'll have our light bulb 
and then our wire going back to the battery. So this is what it looks like in parallel. So notice that in order for electricity to flow, only one of those switches has to be closed. So if the electricity was flowing and that one, that top one was closed, P was closed, it would flow through and then light up that light bulb and then go back. So that would light that up. However, it could also work if Q was closed. So if Q was closed, the electricity would go down in the bottom one and then light up the light bulb and then go back through. Okay, so either one or the other can be closed. Um, now, if they're both open, obviously that light bulb won't um, go down. And then if they're both closed, then the electricity can go in both options and light that up. Okay, so that matches our truth table for P or Q. Remember, for P or Q, as long as one or the other or both were true, then that statement was true. And that's why this parallel series or parallel switches um, works for or. So let's, let's see how we would do that. So we're going to sketch a circuit model by this compound statement, P and Q or R. And we're going to verify the circuit is correct by looking at our truth table. And notice I already have the truth table done. So you don't have to worry about, oh, how, we got to do a truth table and a circuit? Not right now. Tomorrow, or like next time in class, you will. And then we're going to see if that is true. So I'm going to draw my battery. Now notice that the first thing I come across is an AND. Right, so I have to have um, P and Q in series. So they're going to be one right after another. And then that series is going to be in parallel with R. So I think what's important is that you look at the overall structure. What is the main thing happening? The main thing happening in this compound statement is the OR. The AND is kind of like what happens before we get to the OR. All right, so the OR indicates that we're going to have to split our wires. And in that top wire, that's where the P and Q is going to happen. So I'm going to have a P and Q in series. That's going to be one option. And my other option, the OR, is the R option. And then have our light bulb go back to the battery. So this is how we would draw that electrical circuit. Okay, and here's how we can use that truth table. Notice that in the truth table, this whole statement is true when all three are true. So that means when all three are closed, electricity will, will flow, and that makes sense, right? It's also true when both P and Q are closed and R is false. So if I close those two, but leave that R open, then electricity will get through. Another option is I could have P down. Mm, let me pause there. That doesn't seem right. No, it's right. So P closed, Q open, and R um, closed. So if R is closed and P is closed, even though the electricity can't go through that top one, it can go through the bottom R switch. So that's OK. All right, now notice that the first time here, I don't have Q or R closed. So that means electricity is not getting through. So here, I'm not getting uh, a light bulb turning on. Here's another true, so that means, okay, I could have Q or P open, Q closed, and R is closed. So remember, as long as R is closed, I've got a path that'll work. So that's why that it doesn't matter whether P, whether P is closed or Q is closed. As long as R is, op is closed, then um, we're going to have electricity. Yeah. All right, so then here's another one. So notice that both of them could be open, and as long as R is closed, we'll get electricity. And then obviously if they're all open, or if, um, if R is open and then not both of P and Q are closed, then we would not have electricity either. So that's how you can use a truth table to tell how electricity would flow, and then vice versa, how you can use a, um, 
a circuit to know what your truth tables would be like. Let's do another one. All right, so let's sketch this circuit. So we have P or Q and R. Notice that the overall structure is the AND. So we're going to have two things in series. The first thing is going to be this parallel, and the second thing is going to be that just Q switch by itself. So when I'm drawing my battery, I'm going to have the first thing I come into in, in series is going to be this parallel circuit. And then I'm just going to have that alone switch. So in parallel, I'm going to have either P or Q. And then in series, I'm going to have Q. Okay, so make sure that makes sense to you based on how that statement looks. All right, so then, again, when is this going to happen? When is this going to light up? Well, it's going to be true if both of them are down, right? So if I have both of them down, then yeah, that'll that'll work. <clears throat> and then it's also going to work if I have just Q down. So look at how that'll work. So if Q's down and not P, I have to erase that. So if Q is down, then that means it's down here and here. So notice that we're using the same variable for two different switches. All right, so it's going to go through here like this. Okay. So basically, what's another shorter way of doing that? It kind of seems like one of these switches is redundant, right? So rather than drawing it like this, wouldn't this also represent, so it's either when P is down, so P can be either down or not. Notice that the only times that this lights up is when Q is open, right? It doesn't matter whether P is open or closed on those times. So P is really the redundant thing here. So rather than just having, having all this complicated circuit going on, really we can just put Q, right? So as long as Q is closed, this circuit will be, will be um, lighting that up. That would have the same equivalent um, value as all of this. So another way of saying that is Q is logically equivalent to this statement. All right, so in class, we'll do a few more examples together, and we'll look at some word problems, like how does this work in a vending machine and things like that, and, uh, and then we'll build some circuits.